Point Roberts, Washington is surrounded by water on three sides and the Canadian border on the fourth. This distinctive geography is a huge part of its unique identity, but when the pandemic closed the U.S. border, the roughly 1,000 residents in town were stuck. You have got everything that an island has, but no boat. Like a castle with a moat and its drawbridge up, the point has been called the safest place in the world from coronavirus. A blessing and a curse. Point Roberts, Washington had no, zero cases of COVID-19. Even so, some would rather remove the border entirely by selling Point Roberts to Canada. Do you support discussions between the United States and Canada regarding the purchase of Point Roberts by the government of Canada? Also, please subscribe to our channel, Off the Cuff. Though commonly misunderstood and disagreed upon by visitors and locals alike, Point Roberts is a pen exclave, which can only be accessed through the Canadian border from the mainland. This makes getting there extremely difficult during times when the border is closed. As President Trump is closing the border with Canada. In fact, for us, it was a complicated journey. Heading to Washington. <laughs> Normally, we would just drive through the border, but with them being closed, we had to charter a private boat to get to Point Roberts. That was kind of a lot of work to find our way here. We then met up with Tom and his wife Desiree, who took us to our Airbnb. But getting here wouldn't have been possible without Auntie Pam, who actually sent us a suggestion that we visit Point Roberts in the first place. Hi, I'm Chris. Point Roberts feels isolated, but in reality, it's only a 25 minute drive from Vancouver. Often the border checkpoints clear thousands of visitors a day. This is the rumor that's gone around for years is that <coughs> we have had 80, up to 85 people here in witness protection. Huh. And all you ever did was go to marketplace and go to the gas station. Yeah. People would have no idea who you were. While Chris continued his conversation with Auntie Pam, I took to the border to see what the hype was. At that truck, that's the Canadian border. That's how close we are. In fact, this road, Roosevelt Way, is the border. So I decided to walk the full length of it. Until we ran into blackberries, Canadian blackberries. Undoubtedly, the roots are in Canada and the fruits are overflowing into this American street. And they are pretty good. The border is more than just a berry patch for the residents. It significantly impacts their lives. Because it's surrounded by water and border, does that mean you're kind of stuck? Absolutely, yeah. We never thought this would happen with Canada. We never thought that there would be a time when Canadians didn't like us. Well, okay, so let's talk about the benefits of being closed off now. How many coronavirus cases do you have? We have none. Yeah. We still have none. We have gone from being this, the safest place in America to now being the safest place in the world. And that is crazy because we have had so much media coverage. Is this small town the safest place in the USA? And you don't really think of those issues, I guess, with COVID-19 and the border restrictions, but they're caught in the crosshairs. Yeah, should we just annex Point Roberts? <laughs> I don't know what the Americans would say about that. I continued to walk the border until I ran into a real Canadian in Canada. Would you have a quick conversation with us over the border here? Sure. This where we are, you too, is called the Vista. You ever heard of that? No. What, what is the Vista? All around the, all around the country, um, they maintain a, bo a, a swath of land 20 feet wide, 10 foot into Canada, 10 foot into the U.S. And they like it if people like me maintain this stuff and so wow. that it's visible from space. So the 20 feet that's in between us right now, they want to keep perfectly level and clear to see from the sky. We have all these parcel services, right? Because it's so much cheaper to be shipped into the US than into Canada. And your variety is so much better. Is there a lot of that? Do people cross the border to purchase certain goods? A lot of people cross the border to purchase gas and basic supplies if you get it shipped from the states. It's like $5.95 shipping to Point Roberts and $150 shipping to my house. <laughs> and what happens if you cross? Uh, it's not a good thing. Uh, since I'm on camera, I never go across. I wanted to see the official border crossing. So this is the U.S. and this is Canada. And where we are is kind of right in the middle. Wow. 
guys are looking in the window. Okay, we're not being suspicious at all, just staring with the camera. But to get back into America, it looks like we have to go through all that. So are we stuck? While the border has played a significant role in the city's upbringing, no one could have planned for the current scenario. And who better to talk about it than the border guards themselves? While Harris went into the belly of the beast, my conversation with Pam was interrupted by a friend of hers. Hello! Hi! This is Bennett! <laughs> yeah. Chris. Bennett took me to the far west side of the border where we had our own strange encounter. You know, that doesn't surprise me if they're coming up here to meet someone. Hello? Hi. Are you are you meeting to like say hi to somebody on yeah. the other side? Yeah. Yep. See that's how it, that's how it works. No, you yeah. can come this way. Because of the recent restrictions at the border, friends and family frequently meet up while remaining in their respective countries. Turns out this neutral zone is more strict than some thought. They don't want anyone on the strip at all. Oh. Yeah, the Canadians are complaining about people coming across onto the strip. Oh, I thought it was a neutral we, zone. We talk like with, I talked with one of the uh, U.S. border guards and he said that they're, yeah. they're starting to, uh, to come down and, and complain okay. about people coming onto this side over here. Okay. Just to warn you ahead of time. Yeah, that's good to know. Yeah. I don't want to be. <laughs> I, I didn't want you to get. In, I don't want you to get in trouble. No, I if they do go across the border, they can have their privileges taken away from crossing back and forth. With cameras in the bushes and a hidden microphone, I went in to get some information from the United States Border Patrol. This door is actually open. We're filming a small documentary project on Point Roberts and the community that lives here. Sure. Um, would anyone be interested in speaking about that? Well, we were denied. Then Bennett took me to the History Center. If you want the complete history of Point Roberts, we have a timeline right there. Point Roberts has always been an area of interest. In fact, in the early 1800s, there was an expansion competition that had multiple countries fighting over the land. The British Empire, United States, Spain, and Russia all fought over what is now known as Washington. Shortly after the Bloody War of 1812, Russia and Spain rescinded their claim on the territory which only escalated tensions between the US and Britain. Come the 1840s, expansionists in the United States were fired up. And in 1844, James K. Polk's presidential victory over Henry Clay further motivated those ready to see the country grow. Polk adopted the slogan, 5440 or fight, which refers to the latitude line of 54 degrees and 40 minutes, essentially promising Americans that they would receive the northwest corner of the continent or they would go to war. Polk's first border move was to annex Texas from Spain. This dramatically increased tensions in the south, and while on the brink of war, the British wanted to negotiate the northern border. To avoid any bloodshed, Polk caved on his promise and settled to draw the border at the 49th parallel. The Oregon Treaty was signed in 1846, and the border was clear, at least on paper. Each nation recruited their own teams to mark the physical division. However, again, the Americans and British disagreed on how to move forward. The Brits chose to mark the land every mile, while the U.S. skimped on resources and followed a haphazard approach. Unsurprisingly, mistakes were made, notably a piece of land that jutted down into the United States in the Georgia Strait, known as Point Roberts. After several renegotiation attempts, the United States has never given up the land, making Point Roberts, well, a confusing place. But with restrictions and social tensions escalating, many in town want change. In fact, while getting lunch with Bennett, we ran into someone who could tell us exactly how damaging the COVID-19 border closure is to the Point Roberts economy. Nowhere else in North America, possibly the world, is facing what Point Roberts is. If you're ill, there's no drugstore, there's no doctors, there's resident doctors, um, there's no vet for your pets. I mean, there's, you know, go around and take a look, you'll see there's nothing here. So we went for a drive. And aside from the vast green spaces and low traffic roads, we found an alarming number of for sale signs. Many of these were posted by Hugh Wilson. And how has the city changed since the border has been closed? We call it the Canadianless summer. And kind of lonely. Yeah. 
Every summer, thousands of Canadians flock to Point Roberts. And not just the ones with wings. Canadian tourists are the beating heart of the economy. In fact, 75% of the homes in Point Roberts are Canadian-owned vacation properties, which now stand empty. And then he said something surprising. <laughs> I've had people say, we'll get rich off that. Yeah. I mean, you would, wouldn't you? We would. Get rich off what? Good evening, members of council. Do you support formal discussions between the United States and Canada regarding the purchase of Point Roberts by the government of Canada? Thank you. So yeah, John Lessow, a former resident of Point Roberts, is proposing to sell the area to Canada. So Chris met him at the border, kind of. Why did you feel that it was necessary to do this, like you specifically? I don't know. I guess because there's only a few people that could probably pull it off, and I'm one of them. Does that sound egotistical? Because it's true. So I'm sitting on the border of U.S. and Canada. Essentially what you propose is to get rid of this border, correct? Well, that's one thing. I mean, it wasn't to get rid of the border so much as it was to put it to the vote of the people, but that would certainly involve uh, you know, yes, uh, eliminating the border, those five square miles would be added to the lower part of the Tawasin Peninsula and uh, be part of Canada. It's something that uh, people should uh, at least have an opportunity to, uh, to talk about. So could you list off the potential benefits if this were to become Canadian? Well, first of all, you'd have access to schools and medical care, which you do not have now. Currently, in order to access hospitals and other essential services, residents have to travel into Canada to the mainland U.S. and then back. Bearing the full brunt of this inconvenience are children, who must cross a border four times every day to go to school. John's proposal would allow students to go to school in Tawasin, a town right across the border. He's also fighting to give dual citizen status to residents, offer Canadian medical care, and remove all border restrictions. But what's the path forward for this to actually happen? And is it even legal? I sent out emails to Justin Trudeau, Donald Trump, all the Governor Inslee, all of the elected officials. But the whole idea was to secede Point Roberts, if you want to call it secede or sell, to Canada, you have to have an act of Congress. Some of the uh, local elected officials have said, well, if that's what the people want, I'm not going to stand in, in the way of it. While the problems in Point Roberts are clear and now exaggerated with the border closure, many in town disagree with John. Personally, I'm totally against it. It's a legal nightmare, absolute legal nightmare. I think it's very disrespectful to the community as a whole. Most of the community, the full-time people like myself, are against it. If you look at a map, an aerial map, and you see the Tawasin and then you see Point Roberts, you can really see the line and one side is green and the other side is all developed. Mm. You'll see right across the border, our, every house there is probably $2 million, right? It's very, very expensive. If Canada bought this, all of our real estate would be like tremendously valuable, which is woohoo! You know, on one hand I think, oh, I could sell my house for a couple of million. I could buy a, a little condo on the mainland and a villa in Tuscany. But you lose this I've been city. here for 30 years, yeah. It's my hometown. Yeah. And you would lose your hometown. But when you take away the border, you also are effectively eliminating the small town charm that Point, Point Roberts has right now. Yeah, but it's not. I mean, it, I mean, what do you consider charm? It's great to be able to live in Point Roberts if you have a life outside of Point Roberts. The prospect of selling Point Roberts caught the mainstream media and caused a bit of a whirlwind in town. So why, just a few days later, did Pat Grubb, the editor and the publisher of the All Point Bulletin, print... So we talked with Pat Grubb, the editor and owner of the All Points Bulletin. The media craze, how did that affect the city? Um, I mean, some of the reasons why he gave, um, they make sense, but... Um, other, you know, there's just there's so many diehard Americans here. They're just not going to uh, uh, want to see this place turn into another country. Right. It doesn't seem like a very American thing yeah. to let let this go. Yeah. 
I always likened uh, living in Point Roberts like being in a dream. Why do I go through the border four times a day to go to work? Why do I have to like leave the point in order to go to a pharmacy? When you're in a dream, it all makes sense. There's a dream logic, but then you wake up and you go, well, that was strange. It yeah, yeah, that is interesting. I mean, that's why we're here. Like, yeah. we, it is, it is a unique, strange thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, yeah. what, what a border does to a city when it's isolated. Yeah, yeah. Well, especially now. The unique land and city have given rise to an equally unique community. I always look at this place as being, it's geographically Canadian, politically American, and culturally both. 75% of our properties here are owned by foreigners. It's America, Canada. <laughs> it's America, Canada. It's America, Canada. This community, when we get together for fireworks and things, we sing Oh Canada first and then the Star Spangled Banner. I mean, half the population here is dual, Canadian and, and U.S. You were a strange little fishbowl that way. Tom and Desiree, who we were staying with in town, invited us to dinner. So we decided to try and thank them with a homemade dessert. We're going to make a blueberry... Blackberry. A blackberry cobbler for Tom and Desiree. There's some. We're up here in Canadian airspace. Hi. Hello. We come bearing gifts. <laughs> wow. wow. But how did you even make it? <laughs> We're, we've been asking ourselves that question. That's the main question. Like. Oh, it's so nice to have you guys really here. Time. It's really great. So when did you know you wanted to be here? It's so rural and so kind of, you got beach, you got trees and, and forest, <laughs> whining dogs. <laughs> but you're so close to Vancouver, so it's got that great urban, you know, thing going on where you can get some action and go in the city and do your city thing and then blast out and be here on what feels like an island, but it's not an island, you know. Essentially a insanely large body of water. Well, I mean, how do you feel when you're here? Do you feel like you're on an island? Yeah, I mean, I, we've walked from one end to the other and yeah. there's water on both sides. Yeah. <laughs> can't go that way. Yeah. So. <laughs> where this close to Vancouver could we have what we have here? For me to have my own yoga studio, yeah. I mean, that's unbelievable. And would you be able to do that, say, 500 feet down the road? No. No, no. Why no. is no. that? Because you'd, you'd need a couple million dollars to, oh, <laughs> to yeah. set that up. We needed to know what Tom and Desiree thought of our blackberry cobbler. You guys must have had so much fun making it. It was. It was. Yeah. <laughs> you must have had fun making it. I don't think people say that at like a yeah. Michelin star restaurant. You must have had a great time making it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and what made you come up with this idea to, to propose to sell the city to Canada? Like you have the same kind of uh, drive that you know brought you from Minnesota to to Seattle, but you're doing it because you you love what you're doing. I see some of your work, it's part of your passion, and and why not? I mean, half the property down there is owned by Canadians anyway. It's it's relatively easy to do. So you believe in your heart that this will eventually become Canadian? Yes. Yes, I think Canada will purchase Point Roberts, but it will happen, guaranteed. While the future of Point Roberts is hinged on a few factors, if the border opens up, if the selling process continues, and how safe the city remains from COVID, one thing is for sure, the people in this quaint little town aren't going anywhere.